Nathan, welcome back, brother. Hello, Johnny. Thank you for having me back. Now, have you? I did actually mean to ask this before we started recording. Have you trimmed your beard or just made it look neater? No, it's because the wall behind is white and I'm wearing a blue T-shirt so you can't see the frilly edges. <laughs> if I pull it out, you can see that it's not at all neat or trim. Uh, is, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it an official sea captain beard length or what, what length of beard is it now? Um, I think it is, yeah. If I straighten it out, it's it's even longer, but it sort of uh, springs back up like I a... don't I don't think you've quite granted the level of wizard yet, but absolutely well, someday, not, no. someday. No. <laughs> <laughs> so folks, today's episode, uh, we're going to chat about well, three big things. I uh, presented Nathan with three topics to discuss and he kind of went, they all probably have something in common. So <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie, folks, it's just gonna totally wing this one today, but we're gonna have fun along the way. Um, so the three topics I presented to Nathan that I wanted to have a chat about was disappointment and how do we learn from it and growth mindset versus a fixed mindset and having a productive pandemic. Uh, <laughs> some, all, all three of them are something I've certainly had to, to wrestle with. Like we've all wrestled with disappointment in one way or another. Uh, growth mindset I've definitely adopted that in the past year and uh, been having a productive ba- pandemic I'd say I've had a very productive pandemic I could have done more you become a podcast we- host yeah exactly yeah <laughs> uh, and, and acquired an epic co-host in the process oh. um, so yeah I mean I'll let you fire off with this Nathan because you know I I wanted I, I thought these would have been three very distinct subjects but you quite cleverly deduced that they all had something in common so i'm curious as, as to why what what do these three topics have in common in, in your own perspective as as has been said before and um your regular listeners will be picking up on the fact that i am addicted to memes and <laughs> in all their forms so you know, can, can i can i interrupt you who isn't well, addicted to memes that's what's well, getting yes, us through this pandemic i know but- <laughs> Well, I'm okay, the NHS. I mean, Big shout out to the NHS. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know if it, you know whether you're similar or um, or whether any of any of the regular listeners. I'd be interested to know. I I have gone through weeks of just having, and I use the term loosely, conversations with friends that is just an exchange of memes. <laughs> no, no, no words. <laughs> One hundred percent. Yeah. Just, just an exchange of memes, and and so when you when you um, messaged me the other day with those, oh, what about one of these three topics? The the image that immediately popped into my head is that is that well used um, meme format of the very dashing um, Henry Cavill on the red carpet <laughs> about to answer a question, and you know, ba- barreling down upon him with a with a. A grin, fifteen foot wide. You know, is um, old Jason Momoa. Just, yeah. You know, and, and it was like, you know, my my hopes and dreams for twenty twenty, and it's like, you know, COVID nineteen. You know, as Jason Momoa, and it's like, you know, and so I feel like, you know, we've, I mean, we've we've all kind of dealt with personal disappointments and things over the last few years, but it's kind of like, you know, like the whole of planet earth sort of got together to have one big disappointment last year <laughs> that's kind of that's rolled over into this year as well you know which is, you know and there's, there's there's a very weak sunrise on the horizon as, as people have been vaccinated but you know even as we've been vaccinated we've been told by politicians and people going yeah but don't expect to have a summer holiday you know don't don't <laughs> don't expect kids to be going back to school until 2048 <laughs> you know, and, and, and things like that. So it's all a bit, you know, like, come on. And but then within that, if you've been if we're getting disappointed and you said having a um having a growth mentality over a fixed mentality, you know, that do can can both of those two mindsets um help us to overcome disappointment. And then again, like growth in a pandemic, or you have been productive, sorry, in, during the mm-hmm. pandemic. And as I was saying to you before you hit the record button, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, sat at my laptop, um, trying to bash out words for a, for a story I'm trying to write, and feeling like I'm not getting anywhere. And every blooming TV program, there's some celebrity 
saying, oh, yeah, I've, I've just published my second book. I started writing the first <laughs> one in, at the start of lockdown. And I'm like, oh, get yeah. off it, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and I'm sitting there going, oh, I've, I've finished a page um, <laughs> last week. Brilliant. You know, and, that, and, that, and that's, that's a, you know, that's a, a Microsoft Word, um, not a sponsor, um, page. You know, so in, in reality, what does that translate to? Probably less than a page actually in real, Yeah. you know, if it was a proper, you know, handwritten or whatever. Um, and so, and it doesn't help that I, I type on font 26. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> um, comic sans all the way. Um, and so the, and so when you, when you presented me with those three possible things to talk about, I was like, well, they kind of all feel connected. Yeah. Um, yeah. A hundred percent. After, after hearing what you said, even before this call and now, it's kind of like, yeah, they are, they are all connected. I don't know in my mind why I, they are all loosely connected, but in my mind, I thought, yeah, this is like really distinct topics. And I looked at it as like, this just looks like the ingredients list for pandemic in 2021. <laughs> <laughs> Disappointment, fixed mindset. This is never going to end. And like, I haven't had a productive pandemic. So oh, thank, thankfully I've, I've, I've done all right this year, but um, yeah, it was really interesting in that, you know, I think you'd hit the nail on the head with like the past year, year and a half now, you could almost say has just been one huge disappointment, you know, but at the same time, my question is, okay, it's disappointing. Like, you know, I had a pretty boring birthday this year, yeah, yeah. Uh, pretty boring summer. Um, you know, Christmas was nice, but at the same time, getting out and, out and amongst the Christmas markets is one of the best bits and, you know, you can't yeah, yeah. do it. Okay, so we've suffered all this. We've gone through all this, but what have you got to show for it? And it's kind of like, yeah, it, 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 I mean, I do sympathize with people because, you know, I'm at an advantage because I'm in a bit of an introvert. I love quiet. I love solitude. But for those who are extroverted, then this is hell. This is mm. absolute hell. Um, mm. So I do sympathize with you. But um, I know when I went to therapy, one of the most um, astounding things that the therapist said to me uh, because of my, whatever the situation was I was dealing with at the time, she yeah. said, well, um, you're already suffering. So if you take this bold action that you're afraid to take, you're, yes, you may suffer new consequences, but at least you'll grow. It's like where you're well, currently yeah. sat, currently where you are sat stagnant right now, you're afraid because you're afraid to to move forward to take this action. You're already mm. suffering, so why not grow from it? Yeah, why yeah. Well, why yeah, not yeah. why not take that that action that you're terrified to take? But you'll grow from it, and then you'll go. Actually, that wasn't that scary at all. It's not life threatening, um, mm. and then you'll have something to show for it. You can look back yeah, at yeah. the end of the day, end of the month, end of the year, and go, yeah. crap, yeah, that, that was a rough time, but look how far I've gone. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's one of the things, isn't it? So if you're if you're on the outside looking in, so like say for just just here with with you with your with your podcast, and I'm I, I'm an outsider looking in, and I'm like, oh man, Johnny's got a really good podcast. That curious also, and it, it it hits a lot of topics. It, you know, it's doing a lot of good. It's it's spreading some really positive, affirming teaching out there. Oh, he, you know, he's, he's so good at this. Um, and and I go out and I buy a microphone and and a fancy schmancy thing and start to. Um, what what I've not seen, and what none of us see, whether it's you know people who are on TV or or yourself podcasting or um, or even like a, an athlete or, or whatever. Or, or even even like a, a you know a, a pop star like mm. you know wherever a movie star um what you've not seen is all the the small steps they've taken and yeah. and so what what sometimes we we see someone and we you know someone's achievements and we idolize that 100%. And, what we, what, and what we try and do is we try and take a thousand miles in one step and and actually what what we haven't seen is the fact that they've traveled a thousand miles one mile at a time yeah oh yeah 100 uh, percent. and and so you know and, and if you look at like you know like morgan freeman 
like what an exceptional actor you know he's um you know he's he, his voice makes women ovulate you know um, <laughs> um, and yet and yet like it seems like he was he was an old man when he got you know when he was when he played um a seam in Robin Hood Prince of Thieves he already seemed to be an old an old fella then you know yeah. and he's just got progressively older since um but I'm sure that he was doing you know like how many like how many like you know, it's, it's funny, isn't it? When you, if you sometimes see some of these famous people on Graham Norton or whatever, and Graham Norton goes, "Do you remember when you did this advert?" And the, the, you know, you've got this pimple-faced teenager person, you know, you're doing these things and and uh, yeah, and, yeah, advertising like you know, who was the? Oh, there was someone who like did um, McDonald's advert in Australia, and oh, that wow. was their first that was their first break on TV. And, and when you look at the advert, when they look at the advert, they cringe. But like, you know, if they'd not gone and done that, and what you know, that, that was one step in their thousand mile journey. Yeah. And but all we do is we sit there and see them on the Graham Norton show, going, "Well, you've made it now. You've been interviewed by His Holiness, you know, yeah. Saint, Saint Graham of Norton. You're, they're a they're a overnight success. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, the, like, but yeah. that's only because that, that's the bit that we've seen. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think like films like you know, I, I don't know if you saw it, but like films like Rocket Man um, about Elton John and his life. I haven't I haven't seen it, but I I've seen enough to to know. Yeah, 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 you know, and, and like the setbacks and things and the stuff he had to endure to get to being Sir Elton John. You know, do, do you know what I mean? And it's like you know who you know when when you think about good British music. He is one of those pillars of of good modern British music, yeah. um, and so you know. But like, he wasn't born one of those pillars. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, if I can just interject there, it's funny you mentioned that it. because I was just thinking that yesterday, and I don't know why I was thinking it, but I was thinking to myself, all these famous people, say even Joe Rogan, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. He wasn't born a podcaster. No, um, no. I have I've seen. Uh, I don't want to say original footage, but it was like a picture. He celebrated like, I don't know, his 2000th episode or something daft. Yeah, but it was a picture of him and his mate on a webcam like what I'm using now. And they're just mm -hmm. staring like confused into the screen. And then they're like, yeah, so like 10 years ago, we released our first ever episode, haven't got a Scooby. And I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, Joe Rogan wasn't born a podcaster. No, no, no. Um, you know, pick a famous actor or actress they were not born that way it, mm. it's 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 learned but what i what i have always um liked to bring you know this kind of thing back to reality is like that iceberg analogy you know 80 percent of it's already beneath the water you only see the top 20 percent and it's like the top 20 percent you see you know pick your pick your preferred character or person walking down the red carpet getting interviewed on graham norton signing the book deals, doing all this. What you don't see is the thousand times that they got told, no, you're not right for this role. And then yeah. one time, what, what, what baffled me was that even famous actors, I wasn't aware of this, get told, no, they just don't yeah, get an yeah, automatic. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It's like, yeah, yeah. we don't like, uh, before we came on here, uh, I don't know if you met, there was that nineties film, the rock with Sean Connery. Yes. Uh, Nicholas Cage. Yeah. Did you know it's like they what are... happened to James Bond when he got old, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, thing? exactly. But, yeah. but yeah. like, did you know that um Arnold uh Schwarzenegger was actually I think he asked for that role and they said no. What the so Sean like, Connery's role? No, 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 no. Uh, for Nicolas Cage's role. All right, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I think they went to him first. Uh or no, sorry, he applied and they said no. So, like, bear in mind, the 90s is when Arnie was probably at his peak, and yeah. they still said no. Wow. And I'm okay. like, yeah, yeah. yeah, and it went for Nicholas Cage. Now, I know Nicholas Cage gets a lot of grief. I like the guy. I, I yeah, like yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, it, he, he brings a smile to my face every time I see him in a film. I, uh, you I know, can't imagine that movie with anyone else but Nick Cage playing that role. 100, yeah, 100%. So it just goes to show. But yeah. I think the, the broader question underneath everything we're chatting about is, disappointment how you receive a disappointment of of some description so i'll give a recent disappointment i had in that um i went and did an annual fitness test that i have to do 
And in my mind, I was going to smash it out of the ballpark because I always like to not do the minimum. I always like to get a few levels ahead, especially on the bleep test. Yep. <clears throat> and I got, <laughs> I did this. This is a pa- first world pandemic problem. You know what I mean? It's kind of like you're halfway to your destination and you've forgotten your fucking mask. <laughs> <laughs> so I was already late. So I have yeah. to own up. I, I, I was not as organized as I could have been. I was already late. So I had to run about a quarter of a mile back to my uh, accommodation, pick up my mask, run another quarter. So I'd already run half a mile by the time I got to like the bleep test starting point. And she went, do you need a breather? I was like, no, I'm warmed up already. And I thought, this will be fine. I'm warmed up now. And I struggled. See, like, come up to that last level I needed to get. I was blowing. I, yeah. I uh, finished one more level than I needed to. And uh, the PT went, oh, no wasted effort there, was there? So <laughs> I was like, all right. Pass is pass a pass. Is a pass. <laughs> yeah. Great minds make alike. Um, <laughs> and at the time, yes, there was the elation. Yes, I've passed. Another year done. And then I got back to my cabin and I was like, do you know what? I actually ran. I actually, like, practiced for this. And I didn't get the result I wanted. Mm. So I was yeah. a bit disappointed with the result, if I'm totally honest. But mm. what did I learn from it? Well, what I have is like an after action review. And I do this for most things in my life. I, I'm particularly at the end of the day. Yep. So I asked when, what went well. I passed the test. Great. Fantastic. Yep. Well done. What didn't go well? Well, I only just passed it. Okay. So what, are you gonna, what have you learned and what are you going to do about it? Where are you going to improve? So, okay, first off, be more organized. Um, you know, I, w- I was definitely not as organized as I usually am, hence my lateness. And then when I was rushing out the door, I forgot about the mask, which only added to the problem. Um, yep. If I'm brutally honest with myself, I could have trained more. I could have okay. given more effort. Um, but then after this disappointment <clears throat> um, of not passing the test as well as I could have, I actually felt good about myself because now I went, right, okay. Rather than what having a, a self-pity party, because what I would have done in the past would have, I would have downed a couple of beers, probably sat, watched a movie or played Xbox. And rather than improve, rather than dealing with the disappointment head on, I would just use all my modern luxuries as distractions. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. And it's like, well, you have a play Xbox. I don't have to think about the fact that, yeah, I could have done better or where I could improve. Because that's that's a bit of a hit to the ego, isn't it? We all have ego. It's mm. positive and negative ego. So that's a podcast episode I can chat about another time. But mm. it's, a, it's a hit to the ego, isn't it? That you're not as good as you think you are. Or you didn't perform as well as you anticipated. Yeah, so yeah. For, for me, it's quite liberating. Because when you take responsibility for the things that are directly in your control... Mm. It means that you can do something about it. So even so, regardless of the day-to-day disappointments, that's fine because mm. you can do something about it. So in this pandemic, when you can't leave the house or you um, feel like crap, I have literally wasted a year of my life. Um, mm. You know, I, I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That's facts. If you've literally sat and just done Netflix and not really done anything with your time you've wasted a lot of time but i'm just as guilty of that and then you know i'm not going to sit here on a high horse and pretend that i've I've done better i've definitely have watched my fair share of netflix but Mm. with the day-to-day disappointments monthly yearly disappointments okay so why what why are you disappointed did your why did your reality not meet your expectations okay well you clearly did something well this year what was it okay rejoice in that Okay, what didn't go well? Okay, where are you going to improve? So, you know, that's how I would deal with disappointment and then grow from it rather than running away and distracting yourself and throwing a pity party. Look it in the face and it's it's horrible. I'm not going to lie. It's not nice. But if you look at it and with, with unbiased, you know, reality, full spotlight, it's liberating because you suddenly go, right, well, this is an easy fix. I just need to run more. I just need to look after, have my diet maybe a bit better. And then I also need to be more organized. Instead of sat on my phone scrolling through TikTok and crap, I've got five minutes to be somewhere. Right. It's like, yeah, maybe 
maybe maybe less 45 degree culture check out the the few previous episodes seven types of rest for that Mm -hmm. uh, reference folks but yeah that that's my take on this on the underlying part at least this part of the conversation of disappointment and how we deal with it and how we grow from it but uh have you got Mm -hmm. any thoughts on that before we move to the next topic yeah i think that um I think that that is, isn't it? It's 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 how we how you combat a disappointment, um, and whether you allow that disappointment to define, or how you allow it to define you, I suppose. Um, so you know, I I relocated from um, Portsmouth uh, back up to the glorious north um, last year, and on on the promise of a. Or, yeah, on the promise of a job. And it was something that I really wanted to do. I wanted to be involved in. And then the reality was that the people offering the job were not actually offering it anymore. And and the main reason was because of COVID-19, was because of the the pandemic. And and so that kind of, I I thought it was going to be a, a nice, smooth transition from, you know, living down there to being back up here, um, going from being, I mean, okay, it was, it was a supermarket job. I left, but I was, I had key worker status, what, what glory that was. Um, (laughs) and, and going from that to what I thought was going to be a, a, you know, a, a good job, a good place to start from, um, back up here to suddenly find out that that wasn't there. So that was disappointing. Um, okay, so how did I deal with that? Well, I set about applying for jobs, um, you know, and and I kind of wish that your mate who'd done that, talking about CVs and applications and stuff and interviews, I kind of wish I'd heard his podcast in, I don't know, October, but you hadn't recorded it yet and we don't have a time machine. Um, so there's another thing I'm disappointed with, no time machines. Um, but just uh, like weekly dealing with the disappointment of rejection um and and not even getting as far as interviews just getting a cold automated email your application was not successful um and sometimes not even getting that you know um you get a you get a monthly notification from like indeed or total jobs and stuff like that that just and it lists the things you've applied for it just says rejected 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 they don't even bother to tell you you find out on this monthly sort of sum up um and and so dealing with that was you know that it was constant disappointment um but then in amongst that you know being able to do productive things so like i was saying before we started recording using the time okay i've not been you know i've not been super productive i've not become a published author um, but i have joined you in this you know in assisting you in some of your podcasting that's been great productive kept my brain ticking over kept myself challenged um with my dad i've brewed um some beer um you know more than one lot and it's each batch has turned out great and it's been Mm -hmm. lovely um also you know got into sort of making home cured bacons um and and other things like that Yeah, yeah And um, and at the start of this week, embarked on a project. Um, we 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 went and bought a, a secondhand fridge, um, and we're going to modify it so it doesn't just fridge, but also gets hot, um, but not like solar hot, but warm. Mm. Um, to to start doing things like home cured hams and things like. Um, like your cured Mediterranean sausages, like the ones that they make in Spain and Italy. I'm not That's going to try and cool. pronounce them because I don't want to insult anybody. Um, but you know the ones I'm talking about. Um, and so, you know, so there's been, so dealing with the disappointment of those things, one of the things was just, well, finding something productive to do whilst waiting for a job. And, not, and when I say waiting for a job, I don't mean sat my butt expecting for one. I've still been applying. Mm. and still being firing off my cv and 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 actually after listening to your podcast with your with your mate talking about how to do it uh, that made so much sense of having a big written cv so you can just drag and drop pages off it 
that matches what you've been applying for. And so I was, so I did that. I was like, yeah, that's that's really, really, that's a really good idea. And and that made a lot more sense than having the sort of lumbering beer moth of my CV that I had actually <laughs> having a more <laughs> having one that was a bit more agile and you know um, made so much more sense. And so um, and so one of the ways of dealing with that disappointment of of not getting that job that I'd applied for was for me was just applying for another job yeah um you know uh i've not assuming that i've fallen off the horse just because i didn't get it i'm just still riding i haven't found the destination yet and so i think that was for me yeah. that's how i've dealt with the the disappointment of the last four or five months yeah that's really cool um interesting you mentioned that just a, a plug for you know my good friend dylan Bain. this is the episode that Nathan's referencing. Um, I'm useless at remembering names. Sorry, that's not that's all right. Um, yeah, Dylan Bain uh, very kindly came on my podcast and was my first ever interview, actually. Uh, and the episode uh, go back in the track list, and you'll see it. it's how to do well in a job interview. Absolute very gold. good, very absolute good. gold, folks. Uh, he also runs a, his own podcast. Uh, which you can get a lot of value from called Fiscally Savage. So apart from a great name, some really great content <laughs> as well. <laughs> um, yeah, so Dylan Bain at the Fiscally Savage podcast, a uh, good friend of mine, and he's going to be uh, a guest on my podcast in future episodes as well. So you can look mm -hmm. forward to that. Um, so the next thing I want to have a chat about is the growth mindset versus the fixed mindset. So uh, full yes. disclosure, I had a fixed mindset for probably, I'm going to say, yeah, probably the majority of my life. Oh, I'd say actually, no, as children, we have naturally have growth mindsets, but I think state education and our socioeconomic realities end up somehow extinguishing that and, and putting us into fixed mindsets. For the, for, for the, for the morons in the room, and by that I mean me, <laughs> can you can you can you explain what a growth mindset and a fixed mindset is? Do you know what? Actually, that's probably a really good idea. I'm just, I was about to chime off. I have to remember that I've actually been reading about it. So, growth mindset. Oh, I'm going to butcher. I'm going to butcher both these definitions. But if you just look it up on Google, you'll see it. And there's also some very good books on the subject. But essentially, a growth mindset is you would take a situation or a thought or whatever, and you essentially um, learn from it and you grow from it. Whereas a fixed mindset is, right, this is just my reality. There's nothing I can do to change this. Um, so for example, an easy idea of a growth mindset will go back to job interviews. So you have two candidates. One, both get rejected for the job, but one mm -hmm. has a growth mindset, one has a fixed mindset. Right. The fixed mindset individual says, woe is me, I'm terrible, I'm useless, um, yeah. I'm never going to get a job, I'm, you know, what's the point of even trying, you know, mm -hmm. um, and it, it, it creates, they, they in a way become their own bully, they, okay. they end up, um, they end up, you know, accepting for, you know, lack of a better word or description, their lot in life, Whereas a growth mindset person goes, do you know what? Actually, I'm really disappointed. I wanted this job, but what did I learn from it? Okay. okay. I learned that, man, am I the man or the woman? Uh, the at, human. At, the human. <laughs> at the... <clears throat> at, at this particular subject. Like, I went in there and I rocked it. Like, those interviewers were like, whoa. But... I wasn't very strong in this particular area and that's what let me down, but that's okay because I, I know my strengths. I know my value. I know what I can bring to a company, but it just wasn't this time around. So in a way with a growth mindset, I think it's essentially doing, and I've already mentioned it an after action review. It's accepting, yep. it's accepting your strengths. What am I good at? Because believe it or not, folks, despite what some people say, you are good at something even if you yourself like to lie to yourself and say you're not good at anything, you are good at something. Um, Truth. True. So 
so for me, it's it, it's hard for me to speak because I've only ever done one job interview. <laughs> so, but from 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 other job interviews, hypothetically, you don't get the job. Okay, I was really good here. I let's be honest, I was not good in this particular part. They caught me with my pants down, and I <laughs> clearly, or or perhaps even, um, I actually got to the job interview thinking I'd like this job and realized I wouldn't. You know. Okay, mm. so what am I going to learn from this? What am I? What am I going to take away from this disappointing experience, so that I'm not just left with suffering? Yep. Um, and I think that is the main difference between mm-hmm. a fixed and a growth mindset. From my okay. unprofe- from from my unprofessional take on it, that no, that's good. Fi- that makes fi- sense. Yeah, but the fixed mindset won't learn from the experience, whereas the growth mindset will. And you'll go from strength to strength to strength. You know, going off on a slight tangent here, but I'm very, very fortunate, folks, in that I have never lost my curiosity. In that when we're when we're children, we're naturally curious, we're natural scientists. But somewhere mm. along the way, we lose that. I don't know why, and it's different for everybody. But like, don't be afraid to to learn. Like to me, like children have this unabashed ability to go out and experiment and if something goes wrong they laugh or giggle or something and they don't care they just go out and repeat the experiment until it works whether Mm -hmm. that's riding a bike or you know or you know doing something um but it's i i think if we brought a little bit of childlike curiosity and a little bit of that you know throw caution to the wind or the devil may care attitude you know, as adults, then not getting that job isn't such a big deal. In the grand scheme of things, in the grand scheme of your life, it's probably not a big deal. Mm. But yeah, have a growth mindset, get 1% better every day, and you're laughing. So that's just my take on it. For, for the growth, that, that, that's my definition of it. Um, how do you foster it? I'll, very, I'll give a succinct answer to that, and then I'll let you have your, your say and perspective on it. Um, for me personally, um, I'm lucky enough to be surrounded by a great bunch of guys. Uh, I'm in a particular men's group. We meet once or twice a week. The Iron Council. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, for the running joke, Nathan likes to, to make fun of it. but I, I know It's just such a good name. <laughs> it is a good name. I love it. It's a great name, the Iron Council. But yeah, so I'm surrounded by a bunch of guys who really challenge me. Uh, like I've had more growth in one year than I've had probably in 10. Um, And certainly in the beginning, I definitely had a fixed mindset, but the more you um, take ownership of your own life and responsibilities, then when you take ownership, I think you've got, you only have the option to grow Mm. because the moment you say I could be fitter, I could be stronger, I could be smarter, I could be more capable mm. um, in every way, shape and form. Well, you've now got the choice. You can either stay where you are, suffering and not really you know, getting the best out of life, or you can grow. And I don't know anyone who would voluntarily say, do you know what? I'd like to suffer some more. So take ownership and grow. <laughs> um, yeah, Truth, that's my yeah, yeah. that's that's my succinct answer to that. What's your take on it? Oh, do you think sometimes though, like, um, like so when I was going into um, schools, when I was back down in Portsmouth and I was going in and doing um, and interacting with, it was secondary school, but you know, with with, um, with kids who are you know year seven to year eleven, um, which for international listeners is eleven to sixteen year olds. Um, and you know, for as many as there were teachers, um, speaking positivity into these kids, you know, any anything you, you know, if you set your mind to something, it's achievable. You know, if you set yourself goals and targets and stuff, you can do this. But for every one of those teachers, there was a parent relative friend or whatever telling them that they were crap that they weren't going to achieve anything because of where they came from 
because yeah. of um, their family history, because of this, or you know, whatever reason that you end up in a fixed mindset because of all that stuff that's been spoken to you and over you by people that and that almost becomes like a um you know like like a an armor casing around you so that when someone speaks growth mindset to you it just bounces off that wow. steel casing that's i've never um, thought about it that way and and so it's not so much that i don't i don't actually think that anyone chooses a fixed mindset yeah, I think it, it's kind of, um, I think it's kind of more of a, you know, it, it, it's like the, the monster under your bed. It just gets bigger and, and we accidentally end up feeding it. Um, and, and I think it kind of, it goes back to that disappointment thing because you might, you might have a moment of bravery and you might step out into something and and for that thing to fail or for it not to work out the way i think um that talk, that chat you had the other day with the guy who was doing the bushcraft stuff john bow big shout out to john bow at wild way bushcraft and he said you know um don't let the perfect be the enemy of getting something done yeah and i was like there's there's a little pearl right there there's a little, <laughs> little pearl you know and and i think you know because because again it goes back to that thing of what i was saying about when we when we see that person who's who's achieved, and all we're seeing is the is the the end of a of a long journey that they've been on, and we you know let, let's do it in from that acting viewpoint because it's something that's we're familiar with. So we've seen this actor, you know, um, you know, and they're, and they're up there and they're 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 dashing, they're handsome, they're beautiful, they're on the TV. Um, they're on, they're in a movie, and everyone's talking about them. And so you go, right? I'm going to go and do that. And so you then go and audition, and the people just kind of snigger at you. And yeah. next, oh yeah. yeah, everybody was right. Everybody's right. I am ugly. I am stupid. I can't do this. I can't do that. So you go back to believing that stuff. So you end up, you know, and and so that moment of bravery is not rewarded with success. So you go back into because it's almost safe, isn't it? It's almost cocoon-like being yeah. in that fixed mindset. Can, can I just interject? I heard, a radical, I heard a radical notion that blew my mind. Um, Go on. So a um, gentleman who came on my podcast, uh, Colt Gordon from the Colt Gordon podcast, who does mental health, mm -hmm. he said something, not in mine, but uh, in a, another podcast that he was on, in saying that some people are addicted to suffering and depression because that's what they're familiar with and that's what mm. feels safe. And yeah. that blew my mind because that just, you know, exactly. And what you just said as well about the, the, the armor casing around people who mm. the moment they get preached something different from orthodox fixed mindset, you're never going to make it or you're never mm. going to achieve anything. Um, you know, I'll just ricochet off and I'm kind of like, whoa, yeah, actually that makes, it makes a lot of sense, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think also then going back to that, um, when we were talking about, um, we, we've talked about success and, and you were saying that you want to achieve success, um, to have a, you know, a lifestyle that you can enjoy, but also to share it with other people. Yes. And I think that like, you know, if we were, I think there's two things we can take away from this conversation. If, if you're someone who deals well with disappointment and you have a growth mindset, how do you reach down to lift someone up? Great question. And I have an immediate uh, answer for that uh, when and, you're done. Yeah. yeah. And, and, so, and, and sorry, I, 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 all I'm doing is I'm just, I'm throwing something up in the air here because, because it's like, you know, if you're, if you're achieving and you're, you know, you're driving forward and you're taking that one step, one step, one step, one step, you're not, you know, you're on your thousand mile journey and you know, that's where you're on. How do you, how do you lift someone up for them to start there, th not to derail yours because that's also a danger, yes. but how do you lift someone up to start them in and, and to, and to cheer them even if they fail? Um, so that they don't slip back into fixed mindset. But but even yeah. if it's just like you were saying, a 1% change into a growth mindset. 
So I think this is a multifaceted answer, but of course I think because it <laughs> it's I a think, multifaceted question. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's I think at the bedrock of it, yeah, is there's an analogy that I've heard in the past year and I've grown to love, and that is to be a lighthouse. So mm. guilty as charged here. I there's the lighthouse and there's a tugboat, and I I like helping people. I like um, helping people succeed, mm. but for a long time I did that at my own detriment so there were people in my life or people who I came across who I would who I would like to help so I would go out uh, and like a tugboat tugboats get bashed and they're trying to drag people and they try to drag ships or you're in this analogy dragging people and you're trying to drag them to success you're trying to drag them to safety or drag them away from bad habits or a bad lifestyle um, and it just simply doesn't work because the ship is going to resist the tug and you know the tug can pull and pull and pull and you know if you're an empty teapot you can't fill up you know other people's cups you need to be you need mm. to be full within yourself well rested and 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 full within your own body mind and soul what is what is instead a better way to go about it and a factual way to go about it because i've put this to the test is to be a lighthouse so okay I'm not going to lie, it's painful sometimes to watch the people you love make bad decisions and mm. go down a path you know is going to cause misery and mm. suffering. Yep, totally. Mm -hmm. But if you, on the other hand, take charge of your own life, take extreme ownership, which actually plug as well for this book, very, very good extreme ownership by uh, Jocko Willick and Lev Belvin. Um, very, very good book on taking ownership in your life. So let's say uh, you are, not let's say you make a decision today. I am changing today, wherever that spark was for you. So you start to get fitter mm -hmm. and you start to, your mental health starts to really get good. Like you're, you're doing well mm -hmm. professionally. You start to really make some big moves socially. You're starting to, you know, make big strides as well. The people within your immediate sphere of influence are going to notice that. And it's going to make them uncomfortable because suddenly they realize, well, if he can do it, there's no reason why I can't do it. Yep. But at the same time, they're also going to go, I want some of that. Yep. And that's normally the spark in their own head to make them go to self-evaluate and recognize the truth that they're not happy with who they are and yeah. they want to change. So. Yep. By leading by example, you you end up helping change them, and then you're not dragging them, so to speak. But yeah. then, but then I get where you're coming from, and that how do you help them? So once you're in a position, once you're full, you know, once your your cup is full, then you can pour out into others, mm -hmm. and you can help them. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that that would sort of, I think that might work for like fifty percent of the people. I think uh, maybe maybe more, maybe I'm being too cynical. But I think that if someone is really deep set in that fixed mentality, they'll see you succeeding and assume that there's no hope that they can ever achieve. Well and I and I think and I get and I get it. And the thing is is that we're all um, you know, we're all only one one spoke in the wheel of you know of connection. Yeah. People have other stuff. Um, and I think that, like you know, that there's, there's a you know a, a very famous, it's used everywhere now, um, African proverb that says it takes a whole village to raise a child. Um, yes. You know, and and so and when you when you look at that, you know, the, the various sort of inputs and different things, and and it might be that you know that it's someone else to spark that you know, lights, lights that person's fire. It's not, doesn't necessarily have to be yours. And I'm not saying that we should feel like guilt or like this responsibility for everyone around us. Yeah. It, it was, I was just, I was just sort of spitballing this idea that we, that there may be just that one person that we know who, you know, yeah, I, and, I know. And, it, and, it, and, it, and it might just be as simple as saying, I mean, like, you know, and like, you know, have you listened to this podcast? Yeah, you know, yeah, because because it, it's it's just it's giving someone a you know something that they can grab onto 
and start to shake off that, you know, that that thick armor plating of disappointment and and I'm never going to achieve. And 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 le- and they will work it out for themselves. Um, they might not necessarily, yeah. You know, and and I think it's it's been encouraging to people even when they've made a mistake. Yes. Like you know, and like what you were saying. So, but but what was good, like what what did go well? It wasn't all doom. It wasn't all death. Yeah. What did go well? Yeah. Um. You know. I, I it's sad reality here, but unfortunately, I, I very recently I have had to deal with people who um i'm not gonna you're not gonna like what i'm gonna say here but some people no matter how much you want to help them yep. will never will never grow will ne- you get you can't it's horrible to say it, you can't save everyone that's that was a grim reality i had to come you know the only thing you're the only thing you are responsible for is yourself you're not responsible for other people's uh opinions or behaviors or whatever you have to take ownership of your own life so Recently, um, we had a member of our team who we we hold each other to account, but in an it, it, it's 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 nuanced. You, you have to if you say you're going to do something, we're going to hold you to account for it. Did you do that? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, I didn't. Okay, why not? What went well? You know, obviously, re- re- rinse and repeat. What went well? What didn't? Were you going to improve? Yeah. Um, and the individual. Yeah had constant excuses as to why they couldn't do it and it, it, realistically it was just bs they were making excuses yeah um yep. and no matter now and within our team we've got people who are hammers they will come down on you with hard accountability <laughs> and they will they will say enough bs do it yep. do or do yep. not yeah more times than not, I'm the nuanced approach. I will go right. Okay, let's a gent a gentle shove in this direction of and you know let's discuss why you're not getting this accountability. Both approaches failed, and in the end, it's not nice to say it, but it's kind of like, well, no harm to you, but we're trying to help you, and you're not growing. If anything, yeah, you're yeah. becoming hostile to growth because yeah, yeah. you know you're making excuses in your own life. So, you know, we had to let that person go. Uh, uh, a interesting phenomenon and i don't know if you've ever heard of it but energy vampire oh i know what you mean yeah Yeah. yeah. so it's essentially like toxic people within your sphere of influence but look it up folks energy vampire right avoid them if you can if they're in your (laughs) life i'm not going to say cut them off because it could be family but i mean you know but you, you need to have a little bit of a a common sense analogical approach to this if there's toxic people in your life yeah. That you really want to help sometimes you've got to accept the fact that these people are not going to grow no matter yeah, how yeah, much yeah. help you give them they have to come to that on their own so yeah. that's in response to oh, the yeah, other 50 yeah. percent i mean i mean in, so in this last month i i had um a friend who back down in portsmouth who i was when i was living down there i i had in terms of my time and emotion and that kind of thing invested a lot into yeah and and with and not just on my own uh, and other people this person has, has come on a long way from where they were and yes that was great uh, but then this last month they were they were hammering me with um with text messages and and asking questions and really quite had yeah, I don't know where it was coming from. Really, sort of negative stuff, and and some of it quite divisive and things like that. And and, and as much as I was giving reasoned and sensible answers and, and trying to um, suggest a more positive outlook and those kinds of things, they they were just they were not receiving anything. And they, everything I was saying, they were saying yes, but this, and I and I was like, yeah, but that thing's not important. This, yeah. you know, let, you know, let's look at this. And in the end, I. I, I reached out to someone who's still living down in Portsmouth and just said, Hey, look, you know, this person, um, is there any way you can, you know, and they know them as well. So it's not like a cold stranger. Is, is there any way you can go and speak to them in person? Because at the minute I can't achieve anything by phone call or text message or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, I think they need that person to person interaction, but I also had to message the individual and just say, look, you know, I can't help you. I'm really sorry, but I, I can't give you what, you know, I, I can't help you. And I just had to end that yeah. interaction. But that, that was a good thing you did. 
as yeah. as hard as hard as that is, that was a good yeah, thing. Yeah, and I wasn't, you know, and I haven't cut them off as a friend, and I'm not saying I never want to hear from them ever again or anything like that, you know. But I'd, I'd got to the end of what I could reasonably do, yeah. And and despite I wasn't actually disappointed with that because if you're saying about after action, after every single one of those interactions, I was like, no, I've I've done the best. I've I've given this person, yeah, good stuff. And and they they're choosing to discard it, yeah. Um, so I wasn't disappointed. You know, I wasn't disappointed with me. Um, and and reviewing it, I was like, could I have approached it differently? Possibly, yes. And so the next time this bombardment of text messages arrived, I approached it differently. You know, and, and tried to be different rather than you know whatever. Yeah. Um, but then but then at the same time, I've got a, another friend who you know things going on and. And this person is responding really, yeah, that's really good stuff. Or, or challenging what I'm saying, but not in a negative way, but just to get more out of what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, and and that person has grown and has changed, and you know, and 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 although some of the problems in in this guy's life hasn't haven't gone away, their ability to deal with those problems is very different. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. And so, um, and I, I won't lie to you, it's it's so much easier to interact with someone who responds positively to you, even if they say what you've just said is a load of nonsense, but I'm glad, but thank you for interacting with me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, 100%. Like, it, I, um, but yeah, this, this sort of goes back to what I'm saying, like the, the conversations you had with this other individual uh, constantly going, yeah, but yeah, but that's exactly the same as we had or I, I interactions I've had with people. Um, and these people, you know, you go. I would. I would argue. Try your best to cut out toxic people within your life. I understand that sometimes every situation is different. You know, um, go to therapy and all that kind of thing. Um, take a nuanced and logical approach to the people in your life. If you can cut them out without. I don't know, serious consequences. Like, <laughs> like your child, you can't just cut out your child, even if they are <laughs> right pain in the ass. But adoption, yeah, adoption. There you go. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I'm joking, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, we have to put that caveat in because people can't think for themselves. <laughs> um, yeah. So, but this comes back to the topic of disappointment. I can't tell you how disappointing it is to have emotionally invested with people um and to give people endless chances and for it to fall flat on my face uh and then to you know quite frankly the sooner you accept that some people can't be saved and you start hanging around with the people who are going to grow with you who have your best interests at heart who aren't going to be toxic in your life drain you of energy manipulate you or or anything of that nature you're going to avoid not only pointless suffering but disappointment because you'll look back and go oh, i could have done better or cut that pit person mm. out of my life sooner um mm. i think we've probably just talked that one to uh we could actually go on forever about that particular topic and we probably will discuss it another time i was going to say if, if that kind of thing is something that listeners are interested in let us know 100 percent. and i know you've said this before if there's anything we've covered um or even in 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 Johnny's other podcasts that you think could benefit from a curious Ulsterman and a jolly Viking battered it out again. Yes. Um, you know, please, please, please do let him know. Cause we, um, we don't just want to be sat here chatting to the airwaves. We want to be doing something productive for, for you, our honored listener. Yes. Um, so yeah, sorry, go on. Uh, I just thought uh, I'd push that out there. I think, yeah, very good. Nathan, very good. Um, on the subject of productive. Um, yes. How do we? Uh, we're gonna wrap up the podcast in enough. Pandemic. Yes, yeah. but how do we? Uh, let's say you haven't been productive to this point, and now you're listening to this podcast. Um, for me, my advice to you to get productive. Uh, mm. I'm gonna give you how I stay productive, what my routine is, and then, um, Nathan, you can have your. You can let us know what you think would kickstart that productivity. Um, but the first thing I would say is I'm reading a book at the minute called The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrond. I would, I cannot recommend that book enough. So 
um, it gave a statistic, a very sobering statistic, that 95% of people will never achieve their dreams, ambitions, and, and whatever, because they resign their, themselves to mediocrity. Um, and uh, and then it asked, well, what are the 5% doing that are achieving? And one of the things, one of the things is a solid morning routine. And I okay. find when I don't have a, my solid morning routine, um, my productivity is is not great. If you start, what to, does it, uh, and what what does a morning routine look like? Uh, I'll go into uh, specific detail uh, right now. But before I do, one thing I would like to say is a quote uh, from I think it was from the book, or he quoted it, basically saying that you know the first couple of hours of your day are the rudder is the rudder for the rest of the day. So if you start off well. It's going to more than likely end well. So the acronym I use for a productive day is SAVERS. So first thing in the morning, silence. So for that, from you or for me, it's meditation. Uh, Or sometimes I just genuinely sit in silence and allow my mind to breathe just to, you know, um, go through thoughts and things. Um, Mm. After that, affirmations. So for positive affirmations. So for me, my positive affirmations are things along the line of I'm going to have a great day. I am a good okay. person. I'm going to, um, you know, pick pick something positive to say about yourself, anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's visualization. So this is a really, really powerful tool. Um, if you go on YouTube, there's actually some really cool videos about how visualization actually affects your reality and your mindset. Um, to give you an idea of how powerful visualization is, Conor McGregor, when he knocked out Jose Aldo, in that mm-hmm. famous UFC fight within like 12 seconds, he mm-hmm. visualized constantly throwing that right hand jab or left, whatever, and knocking him out in one punch. He visualized it over and over and over again, and he practiced over and over again. So for me, when I visualize in the morning, I visualize my success. Like I have a very specific vision for what I want to achieve for my life, and I mm-hmm. visualize it in detail. So okay. that it feels real to me, like, and then that, you know, gets me fired up for the day. Mm. A is for exercise. So for me, I always do morning yoga, uh, 10 minute yoga thing in the morning. Uh, it's just an easy way to warm up. Uh, I normally don't like the exercise until say 10 o'clock or something. Um, based on what my PT says, the most injuries you get in exercise are first thing in the morning. So <laughs> by 10 o'clock, you've had enough to warm up and, and things. There's less injuries around that time, according to him. And he's an expert. Um, mm. R is for reading. So I'm reading Hal Elrond's book in the mornings first thing. And then Mm -hmm. S is for scribing. So that's journaling for me. That's your journal, right? Yeah. So for those of you who aren't aware and for those of you on YouTube, uh, I've got the six minute diary. uh, And it's basically takes six minutes of your day to chat about what went well, what could go better, you know, what is your positive affirmation for the day. Uh, Mm -hmm. And it just, it sets me up for, a very good day. My productivity in just this month by establishing that routine has just gone through the roof. Um, so for a productive pandemic, instead of staying up to two o'clock in the morning, watching, binging another series, which oh, everyone, dare you, sir. Oh, I know, <laughs> um, but like instead of staying up to two o'clock in the morning and you know, deep down, it's not good for you and you could be doing better. It's kind of like, no, how about go to a consistent bedtime, wake up at a consistent time All right, and, well. and own the day, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but so for productivity, um, you know, this is probably one of the most unique times in history. You know, if you're young and you don't have many responsibilities, like a mortgage, wife, kids or whatever, this is like honestly the perfect time to take risks, be ambitious, start that business or come up with that idea or do that hobby you've always wanted to do. You know, you have lots of time and, you know, the risk to reward ratio is in your favor at the minute. Uh, Obviously common sense applies with that one. Um, So, yeah, I mean, the ball's in your court, you know, granted, I, I like to think that the end is in sight for this pandemic, but you still have time to, yeah, you know, really okay. make you know rather than sitting around, lounging around, feeling sorry for yourself, get up, exercise, do something, yeah, yeah. find something that you're passionate about, and go and make it happen. I I would say that even now, you know, like it, with the end being in sight, 
now is, you know, start doing those things. So your mindset is already ready for when we come out of it. Yeah. You know, so it's not like, oh, lockdown's over. Oh, crap, I need to do something. It's kind of, I've, I've al- I'm already doing something. Yeah. Hit the ground running. You know, like, yeah. Well, no, well, just already be running. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, 100%. You yeah. Know, um, you know, if you, if you just become a, um, Xbox slash PlayStation slash Nintendo Switch, again, not sponsors, um, <laughs> um, you know, junkie. You know, um, if, if all you've done is is become hardwired to your um, games console of choice, um, well, that's bad. If if you've if you've just you know, um, you know, like you said, if you become a box set junkie, even more so, uh, that's probably bad. Um, but don't you know? Again, it's I suppose those things are, are, are very easy fixes to the disappointment of of the pandemic, aren't they? They're easy you distractions. Know. That's what they are. Yeah, yeah. They're, but they, you know, and, and it doesn't have to be anything major. You know, learn how to bake a cake, so that when we come out of pandemic, out of lockdown, you can invite your mates around for tea and coffee and a cake that you've made yourself. I like it. I like how, that. how cool would that be that you could invite your friends around for coffee and and a, you know, look, I baked this cake myself. You know. Uh, yeah, and, and sure, it's not going to be a Delia Smith cake, but so what? It's going to be something that you've made, not yeah. something that's come out of a box from co-op. Yeah. Um, you know, or, or you know, do do something, learn how to do something. You know, um, and like and like Johnny was saying, you know, start your day well, but also end your day well. I think you know, by like I think you you alluded to it about you know, going to bed at a decent time. Um, and it's because if you go to bed at a decent time, you will start your day well. And and just, you know, no one's saying that you've got to go and, you know, conquer Jerusalem in the name of Christendom in the next six weeks. You know, <laughs> you, know you know, you know, launch, you know, launch the last, you know, the, the 18th Holy Crusade. No one's asking you to do that. You know, we're not, you know, or, or build a rocket that's going to go and land man back on the moon again. You know, we're, we're not, you know, learn how to boil an egg properly. <laughs> you know, do, do, do you yeah. know, like, you know, who knows, you know, go and do something that, you know, that, you know, the, so that you've achieved, give yourself, um, I used to go and do a reading scheme in, with, um, in a primary school yeah, um, with, with seven year olds. And, and the first session or the first couple of sessions, even if the kid is already quite good at reading, we would read with them um, a basic level reading book. And the reason being is is that the kid reads the book and they feel good about themselves because they've achieved something. Yeah. And But all it is is a really basic thing. And by by the end of the year, because we do it in one academic year, by the end of the year... um, some of the kids have read every single book that you've got and every single book that the school has got because they just take to it. Yeah. Some of the kids have read one book. Okay. All of them get a certificate. Well done. You've achieved it. You've achieved it. Um, and so, you know, so whether it's something, you know, whether you achieve something like that, like Johnny's achieved here and, and become a podcast host and, and, and doing great stuff there or, whether you've done one thing, like just give you set yourself a goal that's achievable. Because like, you know, like you were saying, you know, this is the perfect time to be doing something. And 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 when I say an achievable goal, I don't mean finishing all of the friends episodes on wherever <laughs> or or getting all of the um all of the shinies on Assassin's Creed. That's not an achievable, you know, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, you know. Set you know, set yourself an achievable goal, and and after doing that, then set the next one. Yeah. Um, and and start doing something now, so that when lockdown is lifted, even if the only thing you've got to show for it is that you wake up at seven o'clock every morning and smile at the world, then well done. Yeah, that's a I great really thing. Like that. You know. Yeah. Don't don't set yourself the goal of. 
and I'm about I'm about to say something that I may regret because I don't know how I'm going to paint myself out of this corner. But don't set yourself the goal of saying I'm going to be the next Prime Minister of England, you know, because the chances are you're not going to be. You 100%. could be in you could be a Prime Minister, but not the next one. I like um, that. And so, you know, what I'm saying is set yourself a goal for these next few. I, I reckon we've probably got, if you're listening to this in Great Britain, if you listen to it elsewhere, I apologise for being very Britain-centric. But if, you, you know, if you're listening to us in Great Britain, we've probably only got, let, let's be positive, I reckon we've got about three months left before everyone's vaccinated and, good, and we've got a bit more liberty and freedom again. So what's your goal for mid-March? Because we're running out of February, aren't we? So what's your yeah. goal for mid-March? What's your goal for the end of March? What's your goal for mid-April? What's your goal for the end of it? Yeah. And and start setting those things so that when we do come out of lockdown, even if you've only done something in the last two months, you've at least done something. 100%, yeah. Um, but two things I want to add, and that is, first and foremost, don't, for a minute, feel ashamed because I think that it's so easy for society to even covertly or overtly shame people into taking action and that's not what this podcast is about um i think you know i'm i was just very fortunate that i got a good crowd around me who yep. supported me and have you know and 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 helped me out uh, and i'm lucky yep. enough to have good mentors and good um uh, just all around good people around me but it's good it's important but at the same time, if you haven't really done anything in this pandemic, don't feel ashamed. There's enough people and things in the world that are going to try and put you down. Um, you know, you need without being a narcissist, you need to be your own biggest fan. You need to be self-motivated and and that kind of thing. So I think as Nathan rightly said, that use what time is left in this pandemic wisely. And don't feel bad for the time that has wasted. Just use it as a learning experience. Learn from the disappointment. Yay. Uh, yay look at that we went full circle how, we how did, did we do that <laughs> i know um but one thing i would like to add is the and this, this is a, a a big concept that i've adopted in my own life and that is don't chase the result fall in love with the process because it's easy Ooh. yeah because have you, have you swallowed a management <laughs> book or something like, good to see so oh. yeah because it's easy to it's easy to hit the gym after six months and you get to your ideal weight or uh you gain enough muscle whatever you want right okay now what oh i've achieved my goal oh oh okay but what have you achieved in the in the meantime so let's take the gym for example okay you have you have built up a process of commitment and discipline to go yes. to the gym day in and day out. You've built up commitment and discipline to eat properly day in and day out. You have Green built kale. up, yeah. <laughs> hey, don't 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 diss the kale. <laughs> 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 um, uh, so yeah, but, but then also, um, you'll have built confidence. You will have built mental clarity and focus. You'll have built, you know, self love. Uh, because you'll, you know, you'll fall in love with the process of making yourself better. And that's far more sustainable than, you know, going sprinting, sprinting, sprinting towards a goal. Oh, the goal didn't provide the high I was looking for. So instead, why not, why not become more satisfied every day by, by seeing constant sustainable growth? Because that's why most diets fade. Full, full disclosure, I am not a dietitian or doctor of any kind. But let's face it, the majority of people who go on diets don't sustain them because they're not sustainable. And then they're like, yeah, they may achieve the result and then go back to their old bad eating habits. Why not yeah. fall in love with the process of eating? Help, for example, just diets, healthy, nutritious food that you enjoy consistently and the results mm. will naturally come themselves. That's you know, good. so... Whatever that is, whatever the, the goal is in mind, have a goal because it's kind of like if a man if a man doesn't know um, where he's going and no wind is favorable, you know, it's mm. it's kind of like um, if you have the goal in mind to give you that vague direction, 
but fall in love with the process that when you eventually arrive at that goal, you go, yes, here's the fruits of my labor, but look at who I've become as a person in the process. Yeah, that's so good. That's, that's, that's all really I have good. to say on that subject. Yeah. I think, um, well done, no a lot, wise one. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I've, uh, I've had good teachers. Um, so yeah, folks, that's going to wrap it up for today. If you have enjoyed what we've had to say, or there was any particular part of this episode that you would like expanded upon, please do let us yes. know in all the socials. Mm. Um, another thing probably would be that um, if you uh, would like to give us a positive review on Apple, that would be really appreciated. And yeah, please do give us any and all feedback. Uh, that's mm. always appreciated. Uh, but yes. for us, that's another episode capped. And I look forward to having you back on the podcast again, Nathan. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks a million folks for tuning in. I hope you got a lot of value out of this episode. And let us know what you're going to do to be productive in this last bit of the pandemic. Let us know what you're going to do uh, to get over disappointments what are new approaches are you going to take uh and let us know uh you know how you get on because we do value yeah. you as listeners and Absolutely. want to see you grow but yes mm. folks once again thanks a million and i wish you all the best bye for now nanu, nanu.